It brings back memories of last year. It sure does. It's not quite as warm as last year was, but it's still, it's still an absolutely beautiful day. And uh, there has been a lot of talk about complacency in the Limerick camp during the week, but the way the Limerick team came out here today, there's no difference between that and the way they came out the Munster Championship. I think the most interesting thing about Antrim is that Gary O'Kane and Sean Paul McKillop, who have been two of their best players in de defensively, are now playing in the forward. So it'd be interesting to see how that works out. Indeed. Well, here at Croke Park, of course, everybody was saddened to hear that the of the death, sudden death of Danny McNaughton, who died last Sunday. He was a member of the Cushendall Club in Antrim, and of course played intercounty hurling with Antrim for many years. Fifteen years, in fact, he played with Antrim, and here today there is a minute silence for Danny McNaughton. The hottest of favourites, Limerick, on a warm day in Croke Park. Will they make it against the Ulster champions? Kieran Carey getting the first ball up towards his full forward. Well gathered, however, by Owen Colgan. Dispossessed. This is Damien Quigley being chased by Ronan Donnelly. Plenty of space as well, it must be said, and an easy point for Limerick. Scored by Damien Quigley. He scored three points in the championship so far, and of course he missed the game against Clare. Well, a mistake there by Owen Conlon and Damien Quigley, who seems to love playing in Crow Park, striking first after just a few seconds. And really, it is Antrim that wanted to start brightly, and uh, it's the Munster champions that have already settled. They're very intent, these Limerick boys, are making up for 94. Turns Sambo McNaughton, grabbed by Carey. You're not really getting behind it. Mike Coolahan coming in to challenge. One-handed, being pushed off it as such by Paul McKellen. Back to Kieran Carey, who already is beginning to dominate at centre half back. Up towards Gary Kirby. And that is a ball that's going to go harmlessly wide. Anton player just down injured at the moment. He obviously just got a knock there. Looks like Jim Connolly. And Jim plays with the O'Donovan Rossi Club in Belfast. Just getting a little attention there to a hand problem. It's actually, it's actually Paul McKillen, I think, Marty. And uh, I don't think he's badly injured. Interestingly enough, uh, Antrim have got the wind in the first half, so this should prove a, a big advantage to them. Brendan Prenter getting his first real puck out of the afternoon. Goalkeeper who came into the side just last year. As Limerick mentors enjoy a moment's break to savour the atmosphere. But Paul McKillen is okay. And he rejoins Jim Connolly at midfield. gathered indeed by Mike Houlihan. Sent up towards Damien Quigley, runs on towards Frankie Carroll. Paul Jennings trying to get it up again, it's turns Sambo McNaughton. Most people would say it's a good move to see him at centre-half back, far better at facing the ball. Here's Paul McKillen again, sending it in towards the corner. Picked up nicely by Gregory O'Kane. Nice angle, nice shot, nice points. Good play by Antrim, and the sides are level. 
Well, Antrim has switched Alison McKelly and Paul Graham uh, from left to right, and both of them have great taste and made the space there for, Gary, for Gregory O'Kay to get the ball and put it over the bar. Good score. To blinding sun, Gary Kirby, who once wore a helmet, but uh, he experienced here in Coke Park that he couldn't see the ball dropping down and never worn it since. He gave the ball to Frankie Carroll. And that is a very good score. A very quick response by the Monster Champions. And Limerick go back in front. Already it looks as if the Limerick forwards have the edge and taste over the Antrim backs. And there Frankie Carroll racing through for an over the bar. Well hooked indeed. Gary O'Kane sending it into the corner. And fortunately, Alistair Elliott can reach it. Line ball for Limerick. <laughs> Student at Mary Immaculate Training College, young Mark Foley from Adair. Hitting it nicely. Runs on. Over towards Barry Foley. Who beats his marker Roland Donnelly. Sending in a slither. Which is going to the left and wide. dominating in most sectors. That's Sean O'Neill that sent that ball up. There's Damien Quigley. A spot of bother here for Juan McCluskey. He's happy just to get it out. Getting there again is Frankie Carroll. And Antrim get the tip, but it goes off. The Limerick man says the linesman. It's going to be a line ball for Antrim. Frankie Carroll, who's fought his way back into this Limerick side. Scored seven points against Antrim last year. Sean O'Neill up towards Damien Quigley. And well won this time by Owen Colgan. That's good hurling. Down towards Kieran Carey. Can't control it the first time. Antrim lads in their anxiety getting each other's way. Mark Foley intercepting. And lashing it back up towards Owen O'Neill. Sean McElhatton with him. Referee deemed that Sean was Owen O'Neill was being fouled, so that's going to be a free for Limerick. Gary Kirby has scored one goal and 24 points so far in the championship. 1-7 against Clare. His first scoring opportunity in this All-Ireland semi-final is easily taken. <laughs> Limerick stretch their noses in front by just two points. Breaking ball. Paul McKillen. Picked up this time by Jim Connolly. That's a good dangerous ball, but Joe Quaid is underneath it. He gets a good clearance. Over towards Gary Kirby. Has the time and the composure to send one back in. It wasn't a very good ball, though, must be said. Paul McCluskey leaves it behind him. TJ Ryan gathers it. Difficult enough angle, but he still, he doesn't. Swings it to the right and wide. Number 15 from Gary Spillane. He's already established himself very much on this Limerick side, scoring 1-9 in the championship. Paul McKellar. Hooked by Mike Holohan, fouled by Mike Holohan. 
And Mike Houlihan is now going to be spoken to for that challenge by the referee. Well, it's crucial for Antrim that they don't let a gap open up, especially in these early stages. And this is a chance now to go within one point of Limerick. So the first three within scoring range for Antrim. Taken by Aidan McCluskey, and he gets the point. Antrim supporters here in uh, quite large numbers, but not as buoyant or indeed as confident as in the past. Just hoping that there is one great performance in this side. Gary Kirby, loose ball, and punished superbly by the centre half forward. Two points for Gary Kirby in this match, and Limerick are in front again by two. Well, Gary seems to have totally recovered from his injury before the Munster final, and great point there for Gary from way out the field. Well batted down by Sean O'Neill. Samba McNaughton picking it up. Bring it over to Sean Paul McKillop. And Paul McKillop. Well blocked down by Mike Houlihan. But it's McKillan that has it again. Putting it into the space where surprisingly Aidan McCluskey is unmarked. Has the time now to drop in a ball. Joe Quay did very well. He's back outside. Oh dear. Antrim really not availing of it there. It is sloppy play, but they keep the pressure on. Picking it up is Dave Clark. Trying to block him down was Alistair Elliott. Or come Antrim. However, Stephen McDonough is there from Brewery. It's a great ball up towards Brendan Prentor. Does he stay? Does he come? He stays, but the referee is giving a penalty. For the challenge on the Limerick man, the Antrim defence were under pressure the minute Stephen McDonough put that ball in. As Brendan Prenter hesitated, just keep an eye here on the Antrim defender. There was the pull across. For that challenge, the referee gave the penalty. Antrim need, need to stop this just to keep Limerick at bay. Kirby goes for the goal and is stopped. Not cleared yet. Brendan Prenter is there. And the goalkeeper comes away with it. Well, that was, and indeed it could be, a turning point in the match because certainly you would expect Gary Kirby to rattle the net. They definitely would now. It wasn't Gary Kirby's best shot. Uh, it was saved on the line, but then after the ball being saved, Antrim almost conceded a goal after that, which would never ever happen. But eventually they got the ball clear and they saved the situation. At this early stage, you would feel if Limerick got a goal, Antrim would be chasing and chasing. They're still in it at this very early stage. Paul Jennings taking the sideline cut. Mike Houlihan grabbing the slither. Brendan Prenter again clearing up the loose balls that come into him rather easily. This is Jim Connolly giving a little bit of space, pushing it into the corners. Coming across to meter was Gregory O'Kane. He only gave it back out to Mark Foley. So <laughs> Sambo McNaughton. Great catch as he fell with Gary Kirby. Frankie Carroll challenging fairly. Aided and abetted by Gary Kirby, who loses possession. And the match is beginning to liven up, would you believe? Stephen McDonough sending it up towards Owen O'Neill. Sean McElhatton trying to recover. McElhatton comes in. 
pulling in a first time. Back out to Mike Houlihan. Trying to get away from Paul McKillen. Switching it back over to this side to Frankie Carroll. He's proving a handful as he did 12, to, well indeed 24 months ago when he scored seven points against Antrim in the semi-final. He remains only scoring one so far. Great puck out, well gathered by Gary O'Kane. Trying to get it inside quickly. Sean Paul McKellop returns and pulls and puts it over the bar. Antrim are very much staying in touch. And now, just one point between them again. Well, he may be better back than a forward, but here, when he gets the chance, he loses his man very, very easily, turns and scores a very, very good find. Good find for Antrim by Sean Paul McKellop. And again, Samba puts up the big hand. I mean, this time, it stays on the ground. It's still there for him. And back out to Mike Houlihan. Pulling on it. Well hooked indeed by Barry Foley. Samba McDonald, Frankie Carroll. Trying to pick it up. Giving it outside towards Mike Houlihan. In a dangerous position and in scoring spot. But he too sends it wide. And despite your... Limerick's what seems to be obvious superiority, they're not really putting it away. Well, they're not just pulling away, they're getting great chances, but they're not putting them over the bar, which is very unusual for Limerick, but the game is very, very early yet. <laughs> well gathered by Gary O'Kane. Trying to get it out for Aidan McCluskey, comes back to O'Kane. Then he ran from forwards there. Half blocked down by Declan Nash. That's going to go out for 65. Gregory O'Kane shots there being half blocked. Foul pass man, number eight. Playing well at midfield so far. This is Aidan McCluskey. In the Ulster final, he scored seven points against Down. Quite a reliable free taker normally, but just sending that one to the left and wide. And Antrim would want to be availing of every opportunity. But so far, in fairness to them, they've been doing it. Caught by Joe Quaid. And again, Antrim have it. Samba McNaughton. Trying to get room to swing. It goes off the Limerick Furley. To keep it in, however. Nice skill. Hard tackling there, Paul Graham. And get back to Jim Connolly. Nice turn. And that too is going to the left and wide. Seeking an equalizer for the third time. Lovely day indeed if uh, you're here in Crow Park because not only do you get entertainment but you could indeed get a suntan. Goes down to TJ Ryan. Nice scale and good point indeed. So Gary Spillane's Two contrib contributors to this forward line have now scored. Frankie Carroll has got one, TJ Ryan has got the other. Limerick back in front now again by two points. Stephen McDonough, Kieran Carey is the man who got the hurley to it. All right, Foley, Carey Kirby. Samba McNaughton had been sucked out of position. And Gary Kirby sends it straight over the bar. He really is a superb sharpshooter. 
And I've got three out of Limerick's total. Well, Limerick are after scoring five times, uh, five wides in a row, and they needed scores, and a great score from TJ Ryan, and that's best score of the game so far from Gary Kirby. Stephen McDonough is coming across to clear this. Anton Havert. Ball which is sailing straight over the bar. That's good response by Anton, it must be said. Every time Limerick score, Anton come back with another one. Two points between them again. Well, I think a feature of the game so far, Marty, is the amount of movement in the, in the Antrim forward line. They're moving all over the place, and, and Paul Graham, who started over in this corner, scores a great try from the far side. Unable to uh, keep it in was Aidan McCluskey, so a line ball for Limerick. Remember Limerick playing against the breeze in this first half. It's a reasonably strong summer breeze. Nicely cut in by Mark Foley. Given to Gary Kirby. Mike Coolahan intercepting again the loose slither. Davy Clark coming forward from right half back, having a go, which is going to the right and wide. From Kilmallock. One of two Kilmallock players on the first 15. Mike Houlihan, of course, being the other. Davy Clark going up there, and it was Kieran Carey that uh, seemed to collide with the back of the Antrim man's head. Let's just see this again as the ball came down. Kieran Carey. Pulling and indeed knocking Let's the scalp there right. off Gary O'Kane's crown. So Pat O'Hearn has booked the Limerick captain and just telling him to cool matters down. I don't think it was, it, was, it was a dirty stroke actually. He didn't hit him on the head. I just think Gary O'Kane put off his hand unprotected and Kieran Carey pulled on the hand and, and the ball rather than uh, and anything else. Jim Carey, the Limerick captain, as the caption says, name taken. So Carey O'Kane has recovered from the knock, and goes back in. This is Aidan McCluskey again. Point here would be invaluable, and he's achieved the aim. One point between the teams yet again. Thirteen minutes left now in this first half. Quigley coming forward. This is Owen Colgan. Mike Carroll coming in to challenge. The referee gives the free to Antrim. This is the Antrim manager, Dominic McKinley, who, of course, played fullback against Limerick two years ago. Great free, dropping it in. A little bit of pressure on Limerick here now. Mark Foley is there again. It's a good clearance out to Mike Houlihan. Bring that ball down towards Damien Quigley. We don't want Colgan beside him. Quigley getting away. An attempt and a point, which goes to the wrong side of the post. One of the Pearsick's brightest stars. Damien Quigley. Comes back down towards Paul McKillen. Sending it in all the way, which Joe Quaid read well, anticipated, and sent it 
spread back down. It's come out over the sideline. So that's going to be a line ball for Antrim. Surprising enough to Zayden McCluskey to seemingly going across to take it. In fact, he's going over to get a little bit of attention on his hand there to Dominic McKinley, the manager. As the Limerick bench look on rather anxious. And as you can see from your picture, Sambo McNaughton turns. He's also down with an injury that he's picked up. And requires immediate medical attention. Well, Ashley will be hoping that nothing happens to Sambo because he has made a great start to the game. He's holding that defence together and clearing, mopping up very well at both sides. So hopefully he will be OK. It doesn't look too bad, and I'd say he'll be back again in a minute. Ed Ian McCluskey also getting some attention. It seems to be a wrist problem. And you can see Ed McCluskey's wrist there just being strapped up by the Antrim backroom team. So Sambo returns to the action at centre half back. Well picked up by Stephen McDonough. And to have it once more. David Clark. Leaving it behind him, however. Stephen McDonough coming forward, getting it down for Barry Foley from Patrick's Well. Sambo calls, and Sambo gathers, and sends it straight back up to big Paul McKellar. And it must be said at times that Antrim are playing with good, great confidence. And it was the first time in many, many years when I visited Antrim dressing rooms before Croke Park where there wasn't uh, great confidence in the Antrim team as Wexford manager Liam Griffin comes on to see the uh, atmosphere. Referee, meanwhile, has blown his whistle again. But I think that Antrim will grow with confidence as their performance seems to improve. Without a doubt, Antrim playing exceptionally well all over the field. The defence are controlling the Limerick forwards very, very, easy, very, very easily, and at the moment Limerick are going very dead. They get no fast ball into that full forward line, and they don't look dangerous at the moment. They need some start to ignite them into action, and that hasn't happened yet. It's the incident again. Some wild pulling there. As that ball broke, and Mike Coulhan going down. So the referee was right on it. Gary Kirby with this break. It's a well, and as always, or nearly always, accurately over the bar. Four points for Gary so far. Limerick lead now by two, yet again. Would the breeze, Jer, be a major factor? Well, just looking down here, Marty, it's very hard to judge what way the breeze is blowing, because one flag is blowing from right to left, and the other is blowing from left to right, so it doesn't seem to affect the fuck out that much. Antrim under pressure yet again. That's the way the national flag is flowing, and if uh, you judge that, it's more of a crossfield breeze, almost favouring Limerick in the first half. Thank you, Carol. That's it well, Antrim have it. Which they should have it. Damien quickly comes in, nips in well. Half blocked down. Antrim players go up for it. And again, it's Sambo McNaughton. This is danger for Antrim. They're not good at these sort of situations where there's a bit of dithering and dathering. But they have it, however. Sean McElhatton, Sambo. A wonderful player at centre half back. An inspiration at centre half back. As the play goes down to the other end, down towards Gregory O'Kane. Trying to pick it up cleverly, knocking it back to Paul Graham, who sends it in and sends it very much to the right and wide. Well, I always worry when there's a bit of a, a loose slither around the Antrim goal map, but with this man there, Chair, 
They can be rest assured, it'll be Sam, clear quickly. Sam was having an outstanding game. He's covering both sides. And as I said, if he had got injured early on, it would have been a disaster for Antrim, but he's back in full health again, so he's, he's, do, he's doing really well. Martin Story, the Wexford captain, just looking around for a few neighbours and friends as Limerick, meanwhile, add to their tally. This time it's Mike Houlihan who puts his nail on the scoreboard, and now Limerick lead by three. The Wexford team and mentors just going in there to the stand to view the first semi-final. Barry Foley. Gary Kirby called for it. Trying to get an in for his own O'Neill. That didn't work. Give him carry underneath it. Well covered. He's the Sambo of the Limerick team. Some fouling there by Paul Jennings, says the referee, Pat O'Hearn, on Frankie Carroll. Antrim are rather annoyed with the referee's decision. And again, it's the Patrick Swellman with the free. And most unusually, ball comes back to him. The fake keep ball, Barry Foley, the two well lads. And Foley sends it high and sends it over the bar. Well, that will relieve the nerves a small bit. Most unusually, Gary Kirby took his eye off it. But then they played keep ball, and Barry took the chance. For the first time, there are four points between the teams. Nicely picked up by Alistair Elliott. He takes too many steps with the slither, so a free easily conceded to Limerick. Another one of the Dunloy stars here in Croke Park. Joe Quaid, I think, just checking there that he was going to lift it. And I'll do what Gary did a moment ago. And again, it's Samba McNaughton that is in the thick of it. It comes back out, however, to Frankie Carroll. And Frankie sends it over the bar. This is a good spell for Limerick. And it comes at a very opportune time. Just four minutes left to that halftime whistle. And definitely for the first time, Limerick lead by five. Sean O'Neill, Mike Houlihan, sending it in low this time. To another O'Neill, Owen O'Neill. And he too takes his points. This is the winning and the losing of this All-Ireland semi-final. As you approach half-time, Limerick have added a spell of points, which Antrim have no answer for. But I think the big difference now is that Limerick are moving the ball in low and fast into their forwards. This wasn't happening earlier on. The forwards are moving all over the place creating space, getting chances, and now they're putting them away. David Clapp being held as Mike Hoolan comes in to gather possession. Midfield partner Sean O'Neill, and again it's a low trajectory, but this time off target. Billy Byrne of Wexford just savouring what will be, I'm sure, a great occasion for the second semi-final. Dominic McKinley will be hoping for a little bit more effort now. With just three minutes left to the halftime whistle. This is Paul McKillen again. Mark Foley. He's played consistently well right throughout this championship. The line ball for Antrim. Tom Ryan just not quite agreeing with the referee or the linesman decision, but uh, indeed the referee has overruled it, so it is in fact a line ball for Limerick. So Tom can sit down, take a bit of light relief.
Mike Coolahan's line ball, however, goes very much wide. Very warm day in Croke Park as that man who rubs his face, I think, is indicating it's a tiring day. Lovely to be here. Well gathered, Jim Connolly. And that's a very good point. That's what Antrim need just before half time to reduce Limerick's lead just a little bit and give them a little bit of confidence as well. Well, Antrim are very good in the air, both in defence and in midfield. Very, very good at catching the ball. A good catch there from Jim Connolly and a great time from about 50 yards out. Interestingly, Antrim have changed around their side slightly. Sean Paul McKillop is now playing in midfield, which Jim Connolly had left out forward. Damien Quigley left unmarked. A rather silly thing to do when you have a man of that quality playing at full forward. Damien Quigley's second point of the match. And Limerick stretch their lead again for double scores. Well, Damien coming out from his full forward position is very, very good at collecting the ball like this, very good at beating the man, and a lovely just wrist stroke over the bar. Antrim just keeping it in and picked up by Aidan McCluskey. Sean O'Neill in hot pursuit. David Clark. Getting it back down towards Ronan Donnelly. And Barry Foley picked up by Owen O'Neill. And getting away from Sean Michael Hatton. But the referee has blown his whistle and he's given a free to Antrim. So that will not count. And certainly corner forward Owen O'Neill is very disappointed with the Carlo Mann's decision Ronan Donnelly taking the free plenty of Limerick shirts there Sean O'Neill Leaving it behind him, however, for a second. Picked up by Aidan McCluskey. Good opportunity here. Dead straight in front of the post and well popped over the bar. To Antrim's credit, they have responded yet again. They just won't go away. Well, they have kept that gap now to five points. I thought they badly needed to go before half time, but a point is the next best thing and a very, very good point there from Aidan McCluskey. We're into injury time now, as you can see, in this first half. And there won't be too much of that. Antrim need to keep Limerick at bay in this attack. And just go down by five points at half time. I think they'll be happy with that. Line ball for Limerick. Frankie Carroll. And that is gone to the right and wide. So still five points between them. Limerick have had a total of ten wides now in this first half. Free allowing play to continue on as Kieran Carey comes forward. Outside towards Barry Foley. It's the time to gather it second and third time. Well gathered by Owen Colgan. Under a lot of pressure, however, from Damien Quigley. It's behind you, lads. Now Owen Colgan picks it up. It's a good relieving clearance. Knocked away by David Clark. And that's going to be a line ball for Antrim. Take this line ball, I think, is it? Yes, it is. And the 
referee calls a halt after 38 minutes. And certainly I think Antrim will go in quite happy at half time, but they've stayed in touch with a very impressive team from Limerick. Five points the difference. Half time score Limerick 12, Antrim 7. Jim Carney is down on the sideline. And away you go, Liam Jim. Uh, Lenehan, how will Tom Ryan, uh, you and the uh, Limerick players feel this first half is gone? Well, Jim, we find it very hard to get away from Antrim. For most of the first half, there was only a point, point or two in it. We opened a six-point gap, but they take back to five again. So Antrim are playing with great confidence. So I tell Jim, this won't be an easy game to win. Very good 10-minute spell, though, coming up to half-time. Yes, we popped over a few points there. But remember, we had eight points earlier in the game, so... It's going to be touch and go all the way, and we're going to have to work extremely hard to win this game. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Jim. And that's the thoughts at half time from the Limerick. Who comes in? Uh, Conor McKimrich, first and all. How do you feel about it now? I feel we were doing okay uh, for about a of 10 minutes and less, and then we lost concentration. We let them back in for soft scores, I felt. We have to work for full 35 minutes. I still feel we're in the game yet. Much play for thank you, Stephen. Best luck. Conor McCambridge obviously is the man that's been selected by Dominic McKinley and his fellow selectors to come in and he starts at midfield. Now Antrim will know at this stage that if they really play to their full potential they could certainly put it up to the Munster champions. But they have to avail of every opportunity and play very well. Mike Houlihan down to Samba McNaughton leaving it behind him for a second run and Donnelly comes away with it it's a kind of a backhanded pass but it works out alright because Jim Connolly has it sends one up towards Alistair Elliott knocked away down towards Mark Foley and to the go up for it, but well gathered indeed by Frankie Carroll loose ball again as Andrew go forward Paul Jennings Sending it up towards the big full forward. Coming across is Paul Graham. This is Gregory O'Kane. Antrim need to start brightly, but they give it away rather easily. Frankie Carl pulling it. Comes over towards Barry Foley. With him is Ronan Donnelly. Damien Quigley. Flicking it on. There's a chance here for TJ Ryan. The ball is left behind, and Brendan Printer comes out. But then he scoops it out for Damien Quigley. Oh, well done, Brendan Quinter. Good goalkeeping. Pushes aside the challenge of the full forward and gives an inspirational clearance. Now, at uh, Conor McCambridge. A high, very high ball. Well gathered indeed by Mike Nash. And again, Antrim very good at blocking this little down. Davy Clark up towards Mike Houlihan, who was waiting for it, and Conor McCambridge came in like a steam train. So that is a free for Limerick. Really, Antrim had the uh, pressure on Limerick, but just from a sloppy pass, they put themselves under pressure. Well, that was an amazing day half for Antrim up at the other side when uh, both Damien Quigley and TJ Ryan had a chance to go at the goal. He did very, very well. It's going to be a free out for Antrim. The ball there being picked up off the ground. Oh, and he had rather disappointed with himself as Sambo. Takes the free. Dropping down and gathered again by Mark Foley. Good work here by Owen McCluskey. A bit of wild pulling there, and it goes to Antrim, the decision. And Gary O'Kane comes across to take the sideline ball. Collins Dunloy. Not a good ball, however. Jim Connolly is there once more. Oh, that's nice play into Gary O'Kane. Turns around and sends it wide, and Gary rightly is disappointed with himself because he had the time and the space to put that one over.
blocking ball again. Added to this time. Well picked up by Owen Palgan. He's done well on Damien Quigley overall. Declan Nash. That's a high challenge indeed. Declan checks his neck. That's going to be a free for Limerick. Well, Limerick are dominating the game all right, right from the start of the second half again, but their striking in a lot of time is very, very poor, and hitting in high lobbing balls into the square is the way to get scores on this central fullback. Gary Kirby. A long way out. Well enough, but not accurately enough. Four lines still the same, 12-5, 12-7 rather, five points between them. Limerick mentors there, Tom Ryan and Liam Lenehan from Turnapulla, just having a chat about a possible change. Ball dropped down, well hooked indeed. Anton have it again. Somehow felt he wasn't going to hit that one properly. Well dispossessed, and again, Owen Colgan is playing very well at pullback. Good combination play in the anti pullback line. Mike Houlihan sending it back. Damien Quigley coming out now. That's a total waste of an opportunity where just simple defending would have worked far better. Ron and Donnelly guilty of giving an easy free away. Well, still, that's the type of ball they make sure we play into that full forward line. Fast, low ball like that in front of the full forwards. And at least if they can't get a score from it, they can get freeze like that. Stop on, stop on. Realistically, this should be a point for Limerick. That's exactly what it is. Five points for Gary Kirby. On the top of the 13. Again, Dominic McKinley will be wondering what can he do to give Antrim more possession and more scoring power. Jordan Carey turns McNaughton, Gary Kirby being chased by turns, and Gary sending that in to Brendan Printer. And Cooley gives it out to Ronan Donnelly. Nice play, Antrim. Tim Connolly. Over towards Alistair Elliott. Getting away from Declan Nash. Great play, but he takes too many steps. The ball is in the net. And Antrim will be at least lifted by the opportunity of seeing Alistair Elliott move. No question whatsoever that the referee was correct here. Well, plenty of pace here from Alistair Elliott, a great catch, but look, it just count the steps. He's already taken three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I think you can take three steps, but going to ten is a bit too far. Gary Kirby. McNaughton. Oh, nice play between Hulahan and Gary Kirby. And that is flashed over the bar. Point number six for Mr. Kirby. Point 14 for his county. have it once more. Gregory O'Kane with Mike Nash and he loses possession so it's a sideline ball for Antrim. Double scores again between the teams remember. Oh that's a great sideline cut. That is gone wide unfortunately but it looked good. Okay, just left and wide. Certainly a huge number of Limerick people travelled here to Croke Park today. I think they'll be happy, satisfied possibly would be the right word, but uh, not totally happy. 
as long as the scoreline remains something like this, I think they will be happy going home. 14 points to seven, seeking point number 15 or even more, Brendan Printer. Nice play by the goalkeeper. Sides against the long relieving clearance, gives it to his left corner back, Shane McElhatton. Jim Connolly. In to over towards Alistair Elliott. Called to leave it by Ed McCluskey, who sends it wide. And to now having a total of just five wides in this match. Nice play indeed by the Antrim goalkeeper. What a great catch again by the Antrim goalkeeper. As I said already, high balls in there are no good because Antrim full back line and the goal love that type of ball. But Jim Connolly is playing a great game at wing forward for, for, for Antrim, hitting in very good ball, but they're not getting the results that they deserve for us. Frankie Carroll. Outside to Gary Kirby. Getting away from Terence McNaughton and sending it over the bar. Fifteen points to seven. Tom Ryan and Liam Lenehan are just, I think, being a little bit more patient with their team. Gary O'Kane. Over towards Alistair Elliott. Knocked away by Declan Nash. Picked up by Mark Foley. Back to Declan Nash. From having once more, Owen McCluskey, Connor McCambridge trying to get there. But well beaten by Mark Foley. And Smith are carrying too much weight, too much pace. There's Mark Foley has played very well at left half back. have possession once more now can they avail of this so afraid called into action it's an easy one for him well gathered by Owen McCluskey to Paul Graham the ball is dropping in and Limerick just a little bit lucky there Mike Nash coming away with it to Mark Foley Frankie Carroll battling with Paul Jennings Damien Quigley getting inside. Still Quigley. Operating now at corner forward. Still Quigley. Has he got room to swing that hurley? There's danger here. Knocked down Brendan Printer again. Saved on the line. And Owen Colgan comes to his county's rescue. Turns McNaughton. Goes one way and then hits it another. Over to Aidan Aiden McCluskey. Picked up nicely, however by Stephen McDonough. Damien Quigley. Now moved to top of the right, getting away from his mark. Oh, brilliant block down by Paul Graham, the corner forward. Frankie Carroll. Hooked and blocked again. Antrim playing with tremendous spirit. An easy point, surely. And again, a wonderful block down. This time by Owen McCluskey without a boot. And that effort's sent wide by Owen O'Neill. But that wonderful passage of play must surely be highlighted by tremendous passion by Antrim because they really were at sixes and sevens. Well, I know it's great tackling by Antrim, but you must say that the Limerick forwards are making very, very hard work of scoring points yet. Apart from Gary Perry, Kirby, who's scoring points at his ease, the rest of them are very slow on that striking and missing a lot of very easy opportunities. Now, Owen O'Neill finished off at the end of this and sent the ball just barely wide, but it should have been over the bar long before that. Joe Quaid at the other end seems to be in trouble. He had a knee injury all right during the year, but seems to have fully recovered, but just getting a little bit of attention. I think just with that high ball in there that hit off the post, uh, I think Joe must have hit off the post as well at that time. Joe Quaid seems to be able to continue on. As Antrim introduced a substitute, Kieran McCambridge, is coming on. 
It's the instant again with Joe Quaid. Yeah, Joe. he has a high ball and he hits off the post. Very hard to see what happened to Joe. He bumped his face or, or knee into, onto the post. He seemed, yeah, I think he hit his knee off the post as the ball hit off it as well. The ball cleared, he goes down. So Kieran McCambridge is on and the man that's gone off is Ronan Donnelly, the mantra. And Limerick are also introducing a substitute. Mike Galligan seems to be coming on. Damian Quigley is being taken off. And Barry Foley goes to corner forward. So all sorts of positional switches. But do the entry ones work? Goes back towards Gary O'Kane. Jim Connolly giving a nice little touch. Well blocked on. Great defending by Limerick. Surrounding their opponents. It comes this time to Alistair Elliott. And again, Limerick players in sufficient numbers. Kieran Carey and Declan Nash. It's Nash that comes away with it. Nice play by the cornerback. Gets in his clearance despite a lot of pressure. Declan Nash seems to have just picked up a muscle neck injury there in that uh, effort to clear the ball. And he too will require some attention. Just as he was hitting that ball, I think it was just a sheer force of uh, his effort to hit the slither and the, uh, the sticks uh, colliding and just pulling a muscle in the process. Seems to be okay as uh, Gary O'Kane, captain of Antwerp, takes the sideline cut. It's a good one. Limerick players there in plenty. And again, it's Jim Connolly. Twisting and turning, trying to create space. Drop in a ball, which is going over the bar. Jim Connolly has played exceptionally well. As Gerald of Nan said earlier, he now has scored two points. Seven points between them. Well, you must give Antrim full credit for battling away, even when the tide seems to be turning against them. And since Jim Connolly went to wing forward, I think he's made a huge difference. Hitting great ball. And now when the inside fouls wasn't scoring it, he decided to score himself. A very good find. Slither drops down between Aidan McCluskey and Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill gets a touch to it. And it requires Sean O'Neill. Gets away from his marker and then he hooks it very much to the left and right. Well, the free-flowing Limerick attack in the Munster hurling final replay has come just a little bit unstuck this afternoon. Well, I suppose they were bound to play a bad game after playing four very good games in Munster, and, and they're just getting away with it at the moment, but they need to step up an awful lot from this, this play. Well, pulled on. Turns McNaughton to Gary O'Kane. After Sean Paul McKillop. Sends it wide. Uh, what I said at the start of the second half is so important for Antrim. They really have to be taking every single opportunity. in the center. Blue Slither comes to Gary Kirby. Half block down. Chasing TJ Ryan. Locking down. There's an Antrim defense that has really showed tremendous heart. Again it's Jim Connolly. This time giving it away however to Kieran Carey. Happy to see Dave Clark available. It's a dangerous ball. Turns McNaughton again. Hooked by TJ Ryan. Lou Slither and again it pops up into McNaughton's hands. Knocked away by Frankie Carroll. Mike Galligan coming into challenge. It's Frankie. Back down to TJ Ryan. Referee deems he picked the slither off the ground. So that is going to be a free out for Antwerp. With Limerick making a lot of hard work. 
and the creation of space and point scoring opportunities. Well, this is this, a display that the Limerick forwards will want to forget very quickly. They're ticking and poking and missing and getting plenty of opportunities, but not putting them away. And to have it once more. Paul Graham, unchallenged in McCluskey. And that is a great effort. Indeed, by Conor McCambridge. His first of the semi final. And that's what Antrim need. Six points now between them. Well, Kim, Kim McCambridge came on at half time and he's done very, very well since coming on. He takes a great point here. And if Antrim got a goal, you know, this game would be a, would, would end on a, on a knife edge completely. But Antrim need a goal to bring them back into the game. Can they get it? It's Mike Houlihan, sends it in towards the corner, Sean McElhatton beating Owen O'Neill this time. Antrim are playing still with tremendous spirit, it must be said. This is a well-won ball by Mike Nash, Gregory O'Kane in pursuit, Mike Gallagher trolling well, Paul Graham putting it into the corner where Mark Foley is over there, oops, Mark certainly felt that one, Declan Nash is back there, Mark Foley gathering himself up off camera slowly but surely, comes down towards Sean O'Neill, up towards TJ Ryan, well won by Owen Colgan, he's been really rock solid at pullback, the loose slither once more, Frankie Carroll, Sending in a ball which is going to the right and wide. Still six points between the teams. 20 minutes gone now in the second half. 15 to go. Well, a high ball here. Mark Foley bra very bravely puts up his hand, but an Antrim fellow coming on top of him. They crash. No foul there. Ball breaks, but Mark is okay again. Conor McCambridge putting too much weight behind that. And really, they want to be dropping in a few balls in around the house to create a little bit of panic in the Limerick defence, just maybe. Bearden Carey now playing at midfield. And Mike Hulin has gone back to centre half back. As Limerick introduced yet another substitute. And Corey Tobin is being brought in to the attack. And going off is Barry, Fo is Barry Foley. So Barry Foley has gone off and Corey Tobin is in. TJ Ryan. Good work by TJ. Back to Gary Kirby. Oh, and he certainly felt that, Gary. Comes back to Sean O'Neill, and that's gone wide. And Gary Kirby just got the belt of that hurley into the side of the face. Just right. watch this again. I don't know why the referee didn't give a free there. It was a very, very high tackle. I think he got the belt just at the bottom of his face, just on the jaw there, and uh, no free. Gary passes the ball out, the ball goes wide, but really I think that should have been a free into Limerick. getting some attention as a result of that blow just at the side of his face luckily enough he's able to continue on anyway and Antum will be throwing the last dice here as John Carson is being warmed up along the sideline and he I'm sure will take up duty perhaps at full forward and if he does he'll be dropping high missiles into him Paul Graham sending one in now Mike Nash Alistair Elliott trying to get away giving it across can he get the ball into the net it's a scramble who's on it Declan Nash first a 
his way out and for charity no no he's not i thought the referee indicated first he was going to give a free in he's giving a free out he changed his mind and uh, i think it's more accurate to say that he just indicated the wrong direction this was surely a chance for antrim a great test here to Greg, Gregory O'Kane. I don't know why he tried to use his boot when two men around him, why he didn't use his hurley. Loses the ball, and, and as usual, of course, covering back there is Declan Nash. Declan is absolutely brilliant at covering back behind his fullback, behind his brother there. Collects the ball, free out to Limerick. But a really, really good opportunity for Andrew. So Declan Nash does well. John Carson has now been officially introduced. And he, as I predicted, would take up responsibility at the edge of the small rectangle <laughs> there's one man who doesn't want a suntan well gathered by Kieran Carey switching play over to Frankie Carl TJ Ryan and that's going to be a line ball for Limerick extra meters and Kieran Carey is being spoken to by the referee as the Antrim man is told to get up off the ground by the referee Pat Ahern. and that was off the ball Connor McCambridge being told by the referee to get up and get up quickly I don't think he was anything serious last night. He's just a bit adjusting off the ball and can't get my care between town, but there were no blows struck or anything like that. Meanwhile, it's Frankie Carroll with the sideline cut. Brendan Printer comes out. The ball is loose. The referee has signaled that the umpire has raised his green flag. That is a goal for Limerick. Antrim players, including the Lantern manager, is coming in to protest. Down on the deck is Owen Colgan, but Dominic McKinley is quite enraged. And the umpire signaled a green flag immediately, and the referee acknowledged it. Well, it'll be very interesting to see this again. A high ball, the goalie missed, the cornerback missed it, and... Um he stepped over the line with the ball. I think that's the reason why it was a goal. It wasn't the Limerick man in the square. <laughs> it seemed that Owen McCluskey grabbed the ball but stepped over the line and that would be a goal for Limerick. Well, here it is here. again now. Goalie goes up, misses the ball. I think Owen McCluskey comes in behind, catches it. Here he's in. Yeah, his hand went over the line, I would say. Even though Sean Michael Hatton is now way there. And see, he, I, I think he definitely stepped over the line with the ball. Well, Antrim needed a goal, and instead it worked out Limerick's way. Now, can they do anything? Going back is Mike Houlihan. Double scores yet again. I don't know if the referee is right here either. I think this, uh, uh, we, we, we'll see it again whether it should have been an Antrim ball, but anyway, the referee is, oh, it's a free. He's giving a free to Lemery. It's, not, it's nothing to do with the line ball. He's giving a free to Lemery. To Gary Kirby to take it. And Gary Kirby puts it straight over the bar. And that surely now books Limerick's passage to the All-Ireland final. That's the scoreline, 116 to nine points. Limerick players there, again in sufficient numbers. Kieran Carey, but it scoops itself out for his uh, Gary O'Kane. Half blocked down, Sean O'Neill pulling it into the space where Owen O'Neill is there. And Owen O'Neill sends it wide.
Limerick happy, I'm sure, now. Mark Foley. And there's always one bad game, I suppose, in uh, every team's progress, and I think Limerick will be happy to have gotten this one out of their system. And Dominic McKinley again is totally enraged by the referee's decision to give a free to Limerick. Says that the Limerick man was travelling, taking too many steps. Mike Hula. Good, dangerous ball. On O'Neill goes up high, misses it, however. Mike Galligan trying to make an angle, and he too sends it wide. Limerick now have a total of 18 wides in this semi final. Something which I'm sure will not at all please the Limerick supporters or indeed their manager. Here and carry. Knocked away. Connor McCambridge, nine ball for Limerick. Just over five minutes left now in this All Ireland semi final. And that goal effectively killed off this match, didn't it, Jeff? Well, that's just what Limerick wanted to finish off the game. Uh, it hasn't been their best display so far this year, but as you said, every, every team has one bad display in them, and Limerick are just glad to get out of the system today. McGalligan hooked there by Jim Connolly. Sufficiently well enough to uh, make him in, force him into the air, so it's a line ball for Antrim. Antrim substitutes, I think, are now fully accepting that defeat is going to be their lot today. Paul Jennings cuts this one. Jim Connolly. On back is Kieran Carey. Carey O'Kane cleverly back to Connor McCambridge. Ball in pursuit of uh, a goal, I'm sure, that they need now. Sending it in low into the side netting. It's going to be a puck out for Joe Quaid. gathered by Conor McCambridge who's done very well since he was introduced at halftime and some supporters rather in disdain there kind of uh, cheer the fact that they got a free from this referee not pleased with some of his decisions in the second half Paul Jennings low to Conor McCambridge gets away from Kieran Carey not for very long now without his left boot, right boot in fact, as Jim Connolly sends that over the bar. He scored three points and has easily been Antrim's most impressive, most impressive player. Nine points between the teams. Well, unfortunately for Antrim, they don't have enough of Jim Connolly's on the field. He has worked tirelessly all through this, all through the game, but especially in the second half, and scores another great find there for Antrim. Well blocked down, Mark Foley just getting in the way for a second. Steve McDonough, nothing with Paul Graham. And giving it straight back, Gary O'Kane to Stephen McDonough. Comes away, gives a good ball up to his, his forwards. Here in McCambridge. Well won by Gary O'Kane, and he puts it over the bar. Good point by the captain, his first of the match, but really now they need goals very, very quickly. Well, this is the type of ball that, uh, that uh, Antrim should have been playing much more often all through the game. A good hit, high ball into the full forward line, a good catch by Gary O'Kane and a great score. Oh, 
that's what you call a challenge. Terence McNaughton is back there. Down towards Aidan McCluskey. Can't control it. Nine ball for Limerick. Well, his side may be in the All-Ireland final, but I don't think he's too happy with what's on display. A hefty challenge there. The most worrying thing from Limerick's point of view is that there's no tat on the play at all to that forward line. It's just hit and miss, everybody playing individually, and they'll have to improve an awful lot of the, between now and, and, and the first Sunday in September. Gary Kirby trying to get it in for his own O'Neill. It's a nice pick on from Mike Galligan. Trying to burst his way past him on Colgan. Mike looks for a free. That free says no. Waves play on. Mike Houlihan. Gary Kirby, along with Mike Gallagher. Again, the referee very precise about the pickup off the ground, and rightly so. Sees Mike Gallagher doing it this time. chance perhaps for Antrim to put some sort of respectability on that scoreboard and not with that sort of passing as again Stephen McDonough sends it down towards TJ Ryan that's going to be a line ball for Antrim maybe in many ways Jerry it's uh, the right way to uh, go to an All-Ireland final with most people I'm sure the hurling Experts in the media will say whoever wins the second semi-final should win the All-Ireland. Well, the big benefits are it gives that Tom Ryan and his selectors plenty of ammunition now to motivate him for the All-Ireland. And as well as that, it will lower expectations in Limerick because they had got a bit out of control. It will lower expectations a small bit. So in a way, it's an ideal game for Limerick to have before the All-Ireland. Here's John Carson. He surely will go for goal. And a brilliant save. And again, a sent in. And another save by Joe Quaid. This time it goes over the bar. Well, Joe Quaid was tested twice, and the Antrim player's John Carson goes in and shakes his hand well, for John, a brilliant save. John Carson is a very, 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 very strong, very boldly player, breaks straight through here, and a point-blank shot at, at Joe Quaid. That is a brilliant, brilliant save. The second save is a good save as well, but the first one was absolutely brilliant. A point for Antrim. Here it is again now. He's almost at the edge of the square when he strikes. It's a brilliant reflex save. No time to, to, to see that. Brilliant reflexes altogether for Joe Quaid. So when Antrim did uh, break down this Limerick defence, they found Joe Quaid in top class four. John Cuss with Stephen McDonough. Coming it over towards Alistair Elliott. Sending in a ball for Joe Quaid once more to gather. Here at Cambridge can't hold on to it. Mike Galligan. He's in the thick of it as well, and comes out first, Frankie Carroll. Over towards Gary Kirby. And that is over the bar. Gary Kirby has proven once again that he is the main man in this Limerick attack. And if you can keep Gary Kirby at bay, then indeed you keep a lot of Limerick very much away from the scoreboard. Well, this is the big difference between the two teams. This man is the difference between the two. He has scored five points in play and nine points in all. He's scoring at ease, which Antrim cannot do, or any other Limerick club for that matter cannot do either. And he has it again. This time he gives it away. David Clark. Over towards him on O'Neill. Knocked away again by Sean McElhatton. Over towards Gary O'Kane. And that's a great point by Gary O'Kane. Scored two points in the semi-final and two points in the second half. Both of them very good ones. Well, Antrim have nothing to be ashamed of today. They have battled really, really bravely. I mean, you consider they gave away an OG, and you consider Joe Quaid's great save. It has, it, the thing could have been very, very tight at the end. Well, at the end, it was Limerick's day. For today, they have qualified for the All-Ireland Hurling Final of 96. Kieran Carey shaking the hand of the referee, Pat Ahern. 
the Limerick supporters came expecting a real magical display. They did not get it, but they got a display that was worthy of gaining a place in the All-Ireland Final. The full-time score, Limerick 117, Antrim 13 points. John and the Tom Ryan, what's your verdict? Well, we're delighted to be over that game now and be in the All-Ireland Final, Jim. 18 scores, Tom, but 18 wides as well. Yeah, our, our shooting was pretty poor today. Fowler was shooting from very difficult angles and Antrim didn't give him any room. Fair play to Antrim there. They batted down to the last and we're really trying to be in, in the Lada final. So we had great goalkeeping by uh, Joe Quaid and wonderful performance by Gary Kirby. Yes, uh, there was some good performance out there today. Joe Quaid, Gary Kirby, but I think my man the match will be by long way with Mike Holham. Tremendous batter all, all through. Uh, a great game, fair play to Antrim. They really battled up to, up to the last and uh, they gave a good exhibition of hauling here today. I'm actually thrilled uh, to be in the Atlanta final now. And finally, Tom, there will be keen competition for places in this Limerick team. Oh, there will be very keen competition, Jim, and that's where it should be. Congratulations, Tom. Great to see you back. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Kenneth Walsh from Callum Moore is coming in his place. How are the lads, man? They're in great form. 